back out. Hello and welcome to the Cage Canary podcast. I'm your host, Maddie Gilbert for Before Magic. And today, today is a day that I want to talk about Ricky J. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I can talk about Ricky J now without so much pressure uh, because he's no longer here. That's sort of a weird statement, but I think anybody who <laughs> who knew Ricky J would understand that statement. He um he was an imposing guy. He he was. Uh and I I remember being a fan of his work and, you know, reading his books and just, you know, being in love with his magic and Oh, what year was it when I met Ricky J? Maybe 2000 and uh I don't know what year was it. I don't know exactly what year. I bet I could check. Um but I do remember that he came to the Conjuring Arts Research Center where I was at the time. And he he was meeting uh, with with Bill Kalush there, and I remember when he came in, I was just came in after hours. Everybody sort of had gone home except for me and uh, and Bill. And when he came in, I wasn't doing anything, but I think I just pretended <laughs> like I was working. I was just, uh, you know, I had a book open, or I don't know what I was doing. I was just keeping my head down, and uh, and then um, and then Bill introduced me to Ricky J. I said hello. I was very shy, very nervous, as you can imagine, being in front of Ricky J. And. Um, we we went to we went to dinner after after they had chatted a bit we went to dinner i remember that and uh, we had a dinner and we were we were talking and i was sort of getting to know ricky j it was so it was so you know i don't even remember much from that conversation i remember we talked about matthew matthew bookinger i know that much and uh i know that i did some card stuff for for uh ricky j was working on a bottom deal and <laughs> I remember that I, I was showing him it and he wanted to get a better look so he stood up and he was sort of like looking at it from different angles and um, and then I I don't know exactly what his health condition was but I remember him you know not feeling well after standing up and and we were joking that my, my, one of my friends was teasing me that, you know, Ricky J almost died when he saw my bottom deal. <laughs> uh, so that that was a that was a funny thing. I mean, not funny, but you know, it's still sort of funny. After that, I kept in touch with with Ricky J um, through correspondence. We emailed each other back and forth. Uh, you know, but, you know, I was still super nervous. Like, how do you email Ricky J? He really is an imposing guy. I mean, that that's, to me at least, he, he was. I, I mean, he's just so good at what he does. He's so smart. Like, you really, I, I don't know, I was just extremely sensitive to every word that was coming out of my mouth and everything that I was doing at any time. Um, fast forward, you know, we, we were corresponding about Matthew Buchinger and, um, I got hired for the first time to perform at the Magic Castle. I think this was in, I, I want to say 2015. I, I think it was 2015. Might have been could have been later 2016 but I think it was 2015 anyways I go there and you know I'm just seeing some friends it's my first time working there working the close-up room and um I didn't 
you know, I didn't want to tell anyone. It's my first time. I'm nervous. I want to, you know, I just want to get through the week. <laughs> and um, one of my friends told Ricky J that I was in town. I, I never told Ricky J that I was in town. I never told him I was in L.A. You know, um, we, we were just not friendly at that level where I felt comfortable and be like, oh, hey, Ricky J. I'm in your town, you know, let's hang out. I I didn't feel comfortable to do that. Um, but one of my friends let Ricky J know that I was working the castle. And so Ricky J contacts me and he's like, oh, hey, I'm going to come see you perform at the castle. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, you can come to, come to my house and we can talk about Matthew Buchinger. And I'm like, I'm super excited, but at the same time, I'm like, horrified because you know it's like on it's it's pressure like you can't even imagine and so i'm working in the magic castle and gosh what a what a crazy week that was i'll have to do a whole other podcast just on that on that week of my first time working the castle but you know what a stressful thing and i'm working the close up room the early early which is like just when the castle opens so i think it's like at 5 p.m. something like that is your first shows so you know ricky j gets there he says hello great we have a drink at the bar and then I go prepare the show, and I think he comes in to see my second set of the night. You do multiple sets. I think you do something like eight sets a night, each around 15 minutes. And uh, I just remember being so nervous, Ricky J being in the room. I, I, I just tried to, you know, not ignore him, but I tried not to, <laughs> not to focus on the idea that he was in the room and for the most part, everything in the show went well, except for one piece. And it's, I, I do, uh, I, I, I was performing Hofzinser's The Sympathetic Numbers uh, in the style of Hofzinser, the way that I learned it from uh, the book. And there's a part in the routine where you know, a spectator, you know, different spectators choose things and it turns out to be a coincidence and, you know, there's a magical effect. Long story short, somewhere during the routine, must have been early on, I totally screwed up. So once I got to the climax, <laughs> none of the none of the coincidences happened. There were there were no coincidences. There was no magic effect. And um you know, Ricky Jay's there. That's like, th that is the only time that I screwed up that, that trick that week at the castle. And I just remember, I, I could have died. I, I mean, it was probably the most embarrassed, humiliated. I'm like, my, like, gosh, Ricky Jay's going to think I'm garbage. Like, how do I, you know, how does Ricky J come see me perform and then I screw up in the show? What a disaster, you know. Um, but you know what? I mean, whatever. That is that that is what happened. That's the truth. I don't know if it was because I was nervous. I mean, I screwed up somewhere during the routine. I, I am embarrassed about it. I am. It's, you know, it's not supposed to happen. <laughs> You're supposed to practice and do magic properly. You're not supposed to screw up in front of Ricky J, the magic castle. No. Oh. Oh, man. What what a what a day that was. Anyways, after that, you know, talk to Ricky J some more and I was supposed to see him the next day at his house. And uh anyways, fast forward to the next day, I go to his house and you know it's a, it's an amazing house. He gives me a little tour and he has just magic everywhere, posters and pamphlets and little you know, playbills and things, I, 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 you know, I couldn't even absorb all of it, but I remember because he was working on the, the Buchinger book at that time that over the kitchen, like on the kitchen wall, he had this like little display and he had every single piece of, uh, Buchinger artwork that was, that he owned, uh, that later, you know, went on display at the Met 
for the art exhi- art exhibit um, called Wordplay. Anyways, he had that all in his on his dining room, you know, over the dining room table. And it was like, I was just stunned, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I haven't, some of these pieces I've never even seen before, some of these pieces, you know, I had, but obviously not in person, and uh, he just brought them over to the table, and he's like, yeah, you know, let's let's look at them, let's talk, let's, you know, and we spent the whole day talking about it, and I was so afraid, you know, of that artwork like I was afraid to touch it he you know he's like handing it to me with like magnify glasses and stuff and he's like yeah check it out look at this look at this tell me what you think about this and I'm like afraid to touch the artwork like I don't even want to touch it I don't want to get like oil on it like can you imagine if I pick up (laughs) can you imagine if I pick up an original Bukinger piece and then like I accidentally tear it or something like that it would be I mean I don't know. I, I I I was so careful that day. You know, I was so excited, but I was so like cautious. It was like this feeling of dread. You know, you're just trying not to screw up. <laughs> um but what a wonderful day and so many revelations were made that day and just it was it was just such a magical time. That was the only time that I that I was at Ricky Jay's house in LA. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just wonderful, really just wonderful. What a, what a day. I, I'll, I'll remember that day for the rest of my life. Really was amazing. Um, let's see, after that, when did I see Ricky J? Uh, after that, we stayed in touch, corresponded. Um, you know, a lot of our relationship, I feel, just revolved around Bukinger. I think that was sort of our main, uh, you know, the thing that we had in common, we were both fascinated by this performer. I'm fascinated by Bukinger for obvious reasons. I'm the only magician in history since Bukinger uh, that's like him. And Ricky Jay was just fascinated by him. I really think Ricky Jay loved Matthew Buchinger, like, he just thought Matthew Buchinger was the greatest thing on earth, which I think he was, Matthew Buchinger was awesome, I mean, he was a little man of Nuremberg, he did crazy stuff in his show, he was, he was actually unbelievably talented, um, but, yeah, gosh, just so many memories coming back, uh, fast forward, the next time I see Ricky J is, in New York, um, he was doing the wordplay exhibit at the Met. That was uh, an exhibit on, I guess, my micrography, micro micrography. <laughs> I don't know how to say it properly, but it's it's artwork that's very small, micro uh, calligraphy and different artwork that's small. And the exhibit was like a mixture of Matthew Buchinger's artwork and some artwork from other armless or legless calligraphers um, and other works of micography. A lot of it, which I believe, you know, came from a Jewish background, if I remember correctly. Um, just, just a great exhibit. I remember going to the Met and just spending hours and hours at the exhibit. And, um, and then he, uh, Matthew, uh, not Matthew Buchinger, uh, <laughs> then Ricky J did a, a talk at the Met, uh, one of the nights. And I went with a few magicians there and uh that that was that was a that was another wonderful uh night you know hearing ricky j talk about matthew buchinger talk about the artwork it's just fascinating um i'm not too sure did i see ricky j that night i don't know if we went to dinner or not i forget oh maybe we did maybe it was another night i don't know I don't know. 
anyways, saw Ricky J. Then um, to promote to promote the uh, to promote the exhibit, he had these fun little uh, posters made up uh, that were I believe Matthew Buchinger was twenty nine inches tall. I'll have to check that. Uh, Matthew Buchinger. Matthew Buchinger. Buchinger. 29 inches. Yes. So Matthew Buchinger was 29 inches tall. I was correct. So, so what Ricky J did was he, he got a... A famous, uh, a famous illustration uh, that Matthew Buchinger made of himself, like a self-portrait, and he had that, like, photoshopped on a poster, uh, so that Matthew Buchinger on that poster was exactly 29 inches tall, and then they had those printed out, and then put like all over the city and parking garages and you know different stuff to sort of you know do some guerrilla marketing uh for the met and i remember i got one of those i i got a few of those posters david roth got some conjuring arts got some i don't have my poster i think it's still at conjuring arts um (laughs) But those posters are extremely rare. Nobody even knows about them. I don't think there's a single photo of them online. Those are extremely rare posters. Uh, I should really, I should really pick mine up and frame it. Because uh, yeah, what a legendary thing. And uh, got, and yeah, it's just it's just amazing to think about. That whole exhibit was just incredible. Um, <sighs> Then let's see. After that, oh, I also visited Ricky J when he came to to New York. I didn't know it, but he he, you know, he had an apartment in New York, so he he invited me over and he he told me some of the next stuff he was he was planning, which I don't I don't know if it's appropriate to talk about. I I don't think it is. I don't know. He's he's passed away, but who knows? I mean, maybe maybe he'll publish stuff. You know, still, <laughs> I, w- I would not put it beyond Ricky Jay to publish stuff in his death. I mean, that that guy, it, Ricky Jay, was prolific. He he never stopped. Um, I mean, he might never stop, to be honest. Even though he's no longer with us, so I don't feel comfortable talking about what he told me he was working on. But it was very cool, very exciting. But I remember going to his apartment, and you know, just gosh. Even more posters. He had one of the most amazing posters I saw was of T. Nelson Downs. That was a poster that I had never seen before. There's no scan of it or, or photograph on the internet. Uh, so it was my first time seeing that. I don't think it's published in any book either. I think it's unique, but it was in it was a it was a an original T. Nelson Down uh, poster, which you know just incredible T. Nelson Downs. Um, let's see, the next time after that that I saw Ricky J, which unfortunately was the last time, was when he came to New York to do a show. Uh, I forget what the show was called. I think it was just called An Evening with Ricky J. Um, but I remember I went there, uh, a few of the people from... Uh, Conjuring Arts went there, and there was a bunch of magicians, obviously. You know, anytime Ricky Jay goes anywhere, there's a bunch of magicians. There must have been, <laughs> there was a lot of magicians there that night. I remember I was sitting with uh, Kristen Lambert, and um, we were we had very good seats. And we, we watched the show. It was great. It was my first time seeing Ricky Jay perform live. And uh, that that was a really wonderful night. Really, it was. It was just, it was just so much fun. You know, it's like, even though I had seen Ricky J do all the tricks before on video, like, 
it's like when you go see a band and you already know all the songs you love their songs but it's like you want you know you want to hear them play it for you you know you want to hear them play it for you live that's what it was like seeing Ricky J uh perform that night at least that's that's how I felt like there was just so many classic things that he performed and I was like oh this is you know just great to see him in person live doing his thing um and then um and then after that you know I stayed in touch with Ricky J uh through email and um and then a few weeks ago you know, I got the news. I think we all got the news that Ricky J had passed away. And, um, yeah, I was just very, very shocked by it. I think it's still, um, I think it's still sinking in. At first, it really didn't sink in at all. Uh, it didn't. I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I guess I didn't realize Ricky J's age. I just didn't. You know, I just didn't think he was going anywhere anytime soon. I thought Ricky J. I don't know. I just, I, I just felt like he was going to be around for, for, uh, for a lot longer. I don't know why. But he, he, he wasn't. You know, he had his time and he he, he took his final bow. And that was it. A whole lifetime of magic. And Ricky J was really, you know, he just came from a different generation, a different class of magicians. He was, he was just, you know, he was wonderful. He, he really, he was one of a kind. Just his personality, the, the, the way he talked. <laughs> The way he performed, the things that he performed, just his knowledge, just his skill, everything. He he really, he just really did a lot of great things for magic, for many other fields. The, the man really was prolific. Um, it's sort of, sort of weird, really weird. You know, I, I had always wanted to make a little film... About Matthew Buchinger, and I I don't know why <laughs> I don't know if Ricky J would have ever agreed to it, but I always had imagined Ricky J narrating it, or you know I don't know being involved in some capacity, uh, because he you know he was so into the character of Matthew Buchinger. I don't know. I just that's the way I imagined it, and uh, but. I don't, I don't think that'll, uh, well, I mean, it can't happen now, but I don't know. It's just like, uh, that's why it's hard for it to sink in for me. It's like, uh, it's, I don't know, just, I believe it. I mean, I believe that Ricky Jay's gone. It's just, it's, it's hard to accept the world of magic without Ricky J. He he just he was he was a special guy. He was a special guy. There will never uh, it will, there will never be another one like Ricky J. Ricky J was just totally unique. I mean, no one's even gonna come close. He he was just in his own league. <sighs> um you know, I could tell you more stories about Ricky J, but I I will say uh Ricky J did have a profound effect on me. I I would never say that we were friends. I mean, I don't know. I don't <laughs> I don't know if Ricky J would say I was his friend. I he, we were certainly friendly. Um he he was just I don't know, but he was a guy who who really influenced me and um really touched me his work is just incredible his body of work that he left behind is so it's 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 hard to compare 
to anybody, both in his performing and his scholarly work. I mean, he was just so well-rounded. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about Ricky Jay. I mean, anybody... I, there's so many people who knew Ricky Jay so well, uh, like David Ross, who who worked on him with his shows, who who traveled the world with Ricky Jay. Uh, I really do hope that there is a book written about Ricky Jay. I don't know who could write it, but, but maybe Michael Weber. I don't know. I don't think Michael Weber would write a book, though, on Ricky Jay. I don't know. Someone should. Ricky Jay is sort of just a giant in magic. It's it, it really is hard to believe he's gone. I don't know. I just I I couldn't believe it when I first heard about it and still sinking in. Um where where does magic go without you know a guy like Ricky Jay? <laughs> and Ricky Jay's a funny guy. He he didn't open his mouth often but when he did he had the final word on anything I remember when um, when that horrible book by Alex Stone came out Fooling Houdini and people within the magic community were telling me how bad it was so I read it and then Ricky Jay read it and he, he wrote a review and it was just like the most scathing review and it just totally ended the conversation it was just like yeah, Ricky Jay spoken. Ricky Jay, you know, doesn't like this book, and he explains why he doesn't like the book, and you know, t- explains all these things about magic. Ricky Jay was just, you know, that guy. He was an authority. Like he just, when he spoke, you listened, and the reason you listened was because you knew that this was, you know, this was the real deal. That's what Ricky Jay was. He was the real deal. Uh, he, he will be missed. I, again, I, I just, it's hard to believe. I, I, I just feel lucky that I got to know Ricky Jay. I mean, we, we had so many years between us. It, it's kind of hard to imagine that we ever even connected. We, we must have had, I don't know, something close to 45 years between us. Maybe around there. Something like that. It's hard to believe that we we connected, and I I would have never done it on my own. I would have, you know, I never would have done it on my own. So I'm grateful for uh, the people who you know put us in touch, and just all the small coincidences that lined up uh, to me getting to know him. It really, it really was. It it really is like an honor that. I knew Rick J. I like even though I didn't know him well, you know, it's still an honor. And um I think it just shows you that some people can have a profound effect on other people's lives even though they don't know them well or have never even met them. I feel that way about a few magicians, but Ricky J was you know, he was just one of a kind. He he will be missed. Um, he he really will be. I I just hope that. I just hope that, you know. I don't know what I hope for. I just uh, there's so much mystery about Ricky J. I really do hope that the people who who did know him well will you know, share their, share what is appropriate to share just for our general enlightenment. There was so much uh, that that man gave to the world and especially gave to magic that I just hope that one day it will be shared by the people who knew him the most. Uh, Ricky J. Well, Ricky J.
you know. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for watching this. Sorry my my thoughts are a little blurry at the moment. It's just... It's it's kind of hard to remember all these stuff and think of Ricky Jay at the same time and think of the impact that he had. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little remembering Ricky Jay. Those were my experiences with Ricky Jay. Um, he was just always a gentleman to me. He was just very friendly with me very kind very giving i would ask him a question and he would just you know send me so much information um and yeah I'm gonna miss ricky J. thank you guys for watching and uh hope to catch you next week this week this week this week